RIP to Sophie, a fucking legend, unfortunately taken away from us way too soon. I think just during the pandemic. I think, yeah, I think that might be one of the first pandemic passings that was really hard to take, especially because I only had gotten into Sophie maybe a year before that. So just to learn a year after that, that she unfortunately passed away in that really horrible accident somewhere in greece i think allegedly sophie was with uh, their partner somewhere in greece looking at the moon on the roof and allegedly slipped and banged their head somewhere i think it if anything it kind of echoes the same passing as dj medi i think dj medi from fucking um what's his name passed away the same way climbing on a roof trying to look at the, the moon or something so r.i.p to fucking sophie an iconic legendary artist that was taken away from us way too soon well sophie's previous collaborators friends family whatever um put together this posthumous album of leftover material leftover work that she was working on prior to her passing and stuff that was probably going to be fleshed out for her next album and put it together in this self-titled um second album on their discography and unfortunately unfortunately for fans like myself it's pretty terrible i'm not gonna lie i've listened to it the entire way through i played it entirely through when i was at the gym the other day and i was very underwhelmed by what i was hearing um the first thing i thought when i was listening to it was how boring it was that's the first thing that struck me it was very boring maybe the intro didn't help i'm not gonna lie the intro went went on way too long and then the second track came into it the track called raw featuring josie was very average the track featuring julian huxtable also wasn't that great um uh i didn't like that either number three was that plunging isom isomatope ice ice isimtope isimtope how do you say that word um i didn't like that at all in the slightest so first three tracks were terrible and if you know anything about the previous album that sophie put out um so um what's it uh oil something i forgot the name of it the full title but you remember the first two tracks after that if i'm not if i'm not mistaken i think the second track of that album was pony boy so it starts off hard then it gets straight into like the sound of the pony like it, it, it fucking beats you over the head and basically makes you feel something so one thing you never get from Sophie's work is boring. You know, you can think you don't like it. You can think it's not for you, but you're definitely not going to come away from listening from, to a Sophie set, a Sophie live performance, a Sophie album, an EP, a single thinking is boring. And this is really boring. So for the first three tracks, I wasn't feeling them at all in the slightest. The track featuring Nina Kravitz might be one of the worst things I've heard in a fucking long time. Um, I was surprised to see Nina Kravitz featured on there. I didn't even know Sophie and Nina Kravitz were friends or collaborators like that. But the track featuring Nina Kravitz was terrible. If anything, Nina Kravitz lyrics like, there's a bar in that fucking track where it legitimately again it's like a like a I, I don't want to say it's like a, it almost feels like a Chat GPT esque sort of bar. I forgot what she's saying in what particular track. Yeah, so it's like track number four. I'm actually gonna get up on my phone here. But what particular line? I was like, what the fuck does that fucking mean? just saying bare random words and hoping it fucking makes sense here it is yeah all series of questions in a single movement like what excuse me huh all series of questions in a single movement it's a rule of transformation that allows you to move what it's the kind of stuff that you overhear in an art gallery while you're you know while there's a performance going on you know in front of you that you're meant to try and pretend like is meaningful and deep it has some sort of, you know, um, weight behind it, but it's just two people rolling around in chalk on the floor and maybe trying to say that that's a representation of our economy or something. I don't know. But it felt very fucking Goldsmith graduation uni project shit. Like, what the fuck was that? That track with Nina Kravitz was fucking, fucking, fucking garbage. And then you're moving on. I'd say the best tracks probably will be the tracks, tracks five, um, Reasons Why, featuring Kim Petras and BC Kingdom, Living My Truth, again, Kim, uh, BC Kingdom and Lives. And then the, be the my favorite track on there was Why Lies. That might be the favorite one. That's the one that got my attention when I was pushing weights in the gym. That's the one that made me kind of get, check my phone because usually when I'm listening to albums in the gym, I actually just play them all the way through and not touch my phone. Even if I like the track, I want to play them all the way through once and then kind of replay the tracks that I like when at the end. And the one that made me kind of glance over at the screen to see what I was playing was Why Lies, number seven. That's a banger. That's a track that I'll play during the set. But that's the only track in the album. And again, think of Oil. Think of how many great tracks were on that fucking album, that Magnus Opus of fucking Sophie. There was many, uh, many uh, Why Lies level tracks and higher. And then for only have one good track on the album, it's pretty, pretty shocking. Um, another track that I did like actually was Elegance, track number nine featuring Popstar. Uh, Berlin Nightmare was really good with Evita Manji. That was really fucking good. 
that, that that's actually a banger too to be fair why lies and elegance and berlin nightmare and the rest of it not really too fond of if i was being charitable and i was trying to be positive i'd say the second half of the album is way better so let's say from track where, where's why lies why lies is uh seven let's say from track 16 to 7 it gets better but it's still not good enough for a sophie discography if anything what it does kind of remind you is that sophie most likely if she was still alive now would have put out way more bodies of work by now and this would have just been one on the spec of the other bodies of work that's out there i know there's an argument that's been said that when sophie passed that she was working on stuff that was more minimal that was more stripped down that wasn't as kind of like layered and thick and heavy as the stuff that we heard on, on oil that wasn't as guttural maybe i don't know if that's true or not but i just think we've lost something because she's not here to finish this work so whatever the interpretation is of what she left behind from the friends and family and close collaborators they don't they, they try their best i'm sure they have to channel sophie but that's what it feels like it feels like a tribute act it feels like somebody trying to channel trying to fucking it almost feels like a you're trying to do like a like a like, yeah like a tribute album like hey i'm inspired by sophie i love what she did and here's me trying to channel it in my own way like you know imitation is the best form of flattery but instead you hear this very vapid very boring very milk toast very uninspiring it doesn't really try and get out of your seat nothing fucking album it does nothing it fills you with nothing and the only real blips on the radar that get you fucking pumped are the tracks like i said why lies track number seven elegance track number nine berlin nightmare number 10 those are the only tracks that really get you out of your seat and make you fucking feel something the rest of it is fairly 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 forgettable the last track actually wasn't too bad the end i'm not gonna lie the last two forever my forever and love me off the earth not too shabby but again not good enough for a what i feel like is a fucking um supreme artist in what's her face in um in sophie she deserves far better than this and it makes me think in general that what i feel like is true that i just feel like posthumous albums should be outruled should be outlawed i don't feel like artists when they pass away their art should be put out i feel like whatever they put out we should remember them based on what they did based on the works of their hand the things that they were able to put out while they were alive because that's the best thing about being an artist the best thing about being an artist especially even on my little level is that the work that you put out is a way of you becoming essentially immortal you never die because of the work you put out it lives far beyond the time that you're around so people can continue to get influenced and inspired by the things that you put out there and you never know what you may birth later on you know in years to come by people are going to stumble on your work and think oh my god you'll do something so amazing and that's going to influence their work and they're going to become a big star that's going to influence other people's work and blah 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 so your legacy will kind of effectively always live on because artists are always going to be inspired by your work and that's going to inspire their work and they're going to inspire other people etc 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 and i just feel like when you do this sort of stuff it kind of sullies it if anything it kind of spoils what's what they had and it kind of if if, if anything it probably makes what sophie did when while she was around more relevant and makes you you love it way more but i think this also kind of distracts and sullies the discography because this isn't good enough this really isn't good enough this doesn't cut the mustard it's too long it's too boring it's too shit it's just not good at all in the slightest and it's really disappointing because i was hoping they would pull it out of the bag but i wasn't that surprised that it didn't go well because i think i remember soon after sophie passed away i remember people saying that there wasn't really that much left in like stuff that she was working on i think she was from what i understood again i could be wrong before i understood sophie was always working on things in the moment so there wasn't a lot of like like hard drives laces full of hard drives of like stuff that was never put out and that she was working on that was kind of you know all done no it was like no she worked stuff in the moment so a lot of stuff that was left over was just ideas rough ideas sketches you know whatever frameworks to kind of work around but that could have all changed on the on the hot like, artists get inspired all the time by you know an interaction a holiday a this a that so that could have all changed completely based on that and we didn't get it so unfortunately because she passed away um so i feel like this album hasn't necessarily done a good job in terms of continuing that legacy in the slightest so i didn't really enjoy it um i don't know i would give this a probably a two out of ten if i could give it a two out of ten maybe even a one fucking terrible really 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 fucking terrible frustratingly fucking terrible i'm not gonna lie and um yeah man sad that her legacy has been kind of tarnished with this album it's fucking garbage it really is sad to say only like two good records on it if anything at a stretch i'll say one 
Um, and yeah, really, really bad. Really, really bad. But RIP Sophie. RIP Sophie. Legends. Legends never die. Legends. Legends never die.